Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Randota. As always, I am D, your host for the show where the meta doesn't matter. I had a thought, and I'd like to run it by you guys real quick while we wait for the game to fully start. I thought about changing up the formula for Randota a little bit, where basically I will still choose a random game, but I want it to be a random game involving a certain hero. And then I'll follow that hero around, give tips, and observe what they're doing, and do commentary basically on one specific hero. If anybody's got any ideas about that, let me know what you think. But we're going to go ahead and get right into this. Good! That's some great game sense right there. Let's go ahead and introduce the team, shall we? Starting on the right hand side, we got Masakari. Masakari? I don't know. Playing the Slardar, who had a great game sense with that Slithering Crush there. To stop Talera here on the tree and protect her for the Dire from stealing a Bounty Rune early on. Meanwhile, top lane for the bounty or for the dire, we got Moshi playing the Luna, and that is an Umbra Rider. Huh, all right then, I haven't seen that one yet. Meanwhile, for the Radiant, we got Boy from the North playing the mid lane on the Viper up against Wibe Kali. Kali is what we're gonna go with playing the Queen of Pain. Meanwhile, we got Hisling. Playing the Doom, walking around, just kind of jungling, I guess. Stoic playing, I guess, the King of Burke, the ruler of Burke, or Chief of Burke, I guess. Playing Chen, Dire. Then bottom lane for the Radiant, we got Stick playing the Winter Wyvern, Scenery playing on the Terror Blade, and then they got Jeff playing the Clockwork for the Dire. That Cog gonna be some pretty good help. But yeah, let me know what you guys think about the follow the hero and cast that hero thing. Because I'd like to try something a little different, shake the formula up a little. Rocks coming out from the golems. Boy from the north is in trouble here. This is gonna be our first blood, probably. Yep, and it goes to Kali. So we've already had our first blood, and it goes against the Viper, which is a bad sign for the Radiant. Losing that Viper is going to be a pain, although to be fair, early on kills, it'll give the Queen of Pain a good lead, but that's not, that's not unbeatable. Viper is pretty good on recovery, because he's very good as a carry. That being said, Chen's coming in with the army again. He does have one throw from a Mud Golem, and they're actually going to use the Rock Throw there. Problem is, Viper, Boy from the North can't kill these because, and that's why, because they split. The rocks come out, Viper takes a ton of damage, jumps forward from Kali. Oh, but the Cold Embrace brilliantly pulled off. Well played by Stick. Meanwhile, Hisling found Stoic and just cuts him to pieces, and the Dire Courier dies with a Null Talisman on it. So they get a, they get a revenge kill there, and they get the courier, so the dire just kind of surrendered the lead, that quick lead they got for their Queen of Pain. Viper's actually now in the lead. Just a little bit. Oh, Talera's been found by Hisling. The, the Infernal Blade almost land in. But, not quite. The Hadoken coming out. It actually doesn't have a name, it's called Shockwave. But Oh, Masakari gets stunned up from the from the Invisible Treant, but the Infernal Blade to stun the Luna is going to help out there. Yeah, I'm sorry, but a, fi a giant fire demon versus a tree man. I think the tree's probably going to lose this, because fire beats tree. Especially when you s combine it with a stun from the Slithering Crush. Scenery chewing down Jeff and Stoic getting revenge. This has been a quick one back and forth all over the place. After Talera fell. Illusion. This is kind of telling me we're going to have a good, strong game going here. Is that because of the helmet? Yeah. Ice Flight Edifice. Something tells me they're kind of going for a Cindergosa vibe on that. 
Don't tell Blizzard. Scenery getting chased away by this converted Wild Wing Ripper. Mostly though, this, this tornado is being used for its vision. Battery assault, but Stoic blocks the blocks Jeff, so the clockwork's not gonna be able to get in. Scenery's just gonna be like, okay. Creates an illusion of himself that dies pretty much instantly. Now comes the Shatter Blast. Splinter Blast, sorry. I think Shatter Blast sounds cooler. Ultimately, this whole Benny Hill scenario. Not gonna end up with a kill for either side, but another Splinter Blast. Scenery's still just running around, avoiding. He's only got five seconds before he can TP, so... Ultimately... That was just kind of, like I said, that was kind of a little Benny Hill chase. Moshi, on the other hand, might be in trouble here. The Slytherin Crush comes out, and the fire damage... Doom's fire... Doom's damage over time abilities are gonna be very hell... are gonna be massive hell on living armor. His link does not manage to survive though, so and it goes to Moshi, so the Luna? Luna's gonna be carrying him pretty hard the way this is looking. And the Lucent Beam is already at level three, so if she hits six. Might put the final point in the Lucent Beam, I'm not sure yet, we'll see. Queen of Pain's still only level five, so she doesn't have the Sonic she doesn't have Sonic Wave just yet. That being said, Viper does have Viper Strike. Chen only at level 3, so he's only got level 2 conversion. Can only hold 2 creeps in thrall. Jeff doesn't have his initiation tool yet. Just, but scenery also doesn't have Sunder, but most of the time you don't see Sunder come out until level 7 or 8. Also, it's kind of neat to see Daredevil's master playing this, especially considering Stick is an old blind man. I'm not making any of that up, actually. That's the fun part. Ooh, Dark Troll in Snare. Dark Troll Summoner. There. The. Oh, unfortunately, the net does not land because of the blink from the Queen of Pain. And that was actually a Viper Strike committed to that as well. Now, Viper Strike has a relatively low cooldown, but. Oh, hold the phone. Moshi going down to stick in the top lane. And Masakari as well survived thanks to that cold embrace. Tolera is going to be next. Can they get this? Oh. Nature's guys is going to save him. Well played. They do still lose Moshi though. That's going to slow the Luna down and she doesn't want that. She did actually pick up Eclipse at level 6. so She does have her ultimate. She can do tons of damage if she can get in close and there's only a couple of targets. There's the Lucent Beam. Splinter Blast comes out. Doesn't do a lot of damage, but then again, a level 2 Splinter Blast. Hmm. Stoic falling. In the mid lane, he brought in his army and didn't help. It Actually, it is going to help here, because that Centaur, the Conqueror, actually might die here, but oh, it delayed it enough. Jeff could come in with the Battery Assault and the Power Cox, but Jeff is going to pay for this with his life, too. He's going to burn to death from the Doom. Talera just managing to get in to the trees, he could disappear here. The War Stomp is ready on his lane. I keep getting distracted by that Dragon Wing up there. So losing the Viper, and especially trading the Viper for the Clockwork is a good trade for the Dire. Clockwork is going to be useful later on, but right now it's better to slow the Viper down. Oh, Boy from the North actually taking down Talaro with the Viper Strike. Viper Strike and Poison Attacks. Oh, that's horrifying. One of the Viper's level 20 talents. Or 25, I mean. You can either do 120 extra damage, or you can make it so that Nether Toxin applies a Silence. That is absurd. Kind of awesome, though. Let's check out the level 25s. Rocket Flare gives True Sight, or lower Battery Assault that's... Battery Assault Interval, eh. Hand of God Heal, or double the amount of people you can have, targets you can have with 
Holy Persuasion, and the Winter Wyvern has actually DC'd. Oh, wait, no, the Terror Blade DC'd, I'm sorry. Uh, there's... Just because somebody's not moving does not mean that they're disconnected. Just saying. Let's go through the dire... Okay, we already looked at 25s for, clock, for him and Clockwork. What about Luna? 25s for Luna. Quarter second Eclipse Lucent Mini Stun, or 25% Lifesteal. Tree. 350 Eyes and Overgrowth AoE. That is Eyes of the Forest, which you get with the... Which you get with Aghanim's Scepter, I think. Huh, maybe not. Queen of Pain, 20 second spell block, or Scream of Pain plus gives a gives a one and a half second fear. Meanwhile, Terror Blade, what are your 25s? Plus your metamorphosis attack range, so your metamorphosis goes from an attack range of 550 to 850, which I think outranges a tower. Yeah, metamorphosis would outrange a tower at 25. Or 35 second lower Sunder cooldown, which means Sunder would be on 5 second cooldown. Masakari, I'm sorry. Moshi, on the other hand, though, is in very bad trouble here. Hisling, though, going to be the next one to fall. Jeff got him in the, got him in there. Double kill for Kali coming in. Taking down Stick. So the Dyer take it, take it even with a 3 kill to nothing in that top lane. Sorry. But yeah, you could actually make it so Sunder has a 5 second cooldown. Which is insanely dangerous, especially since it's free at level 3. Slardar. 15% bash chance and corrosive phase is unbreakable. Oh, there's a good stun on the Stoic. But the Viper is gonna be the is gonna be the main play here. Those poison attacks, Stoic's not gonna survive this. Unfortunately, Tolera is here. Boy from the North and Masakari are on their own. Masakari is going to do his best to try and slow this down. Oh, they turn and get Kali with a stun. And a couple of poison attacks. She might... No, nah, she's going to survive this. They can see her, though. Jeff going to manage to take the bounty rune for himself. And so it's only going to be the one kill. That being said, Boy from the North has found Talera and just chucking out the poison at him. What's Winter Wyvern's 25s? Splinter Blast for a 2 second stun, 1 and a half second Winter's Curse duration. It doesn't sound like much, but 6, six and a quarter seconds... That's pretty dangerous. Especially considering that means that that's even longer for your teammates to beat the crap out of you. Doom, what do you get? 100% cleave and... or 3% Infernal Blade damage. Damn. I'm guessing that's to the max HP is damage, so it'd be 8% max HP is damage over 4 seconds. That's pretty good. I mean, that's 32% of your HP. You lose about a third of your HP on that one, that's nice. And of course, Viper, we already looked at. Again, the, Nether to the silence from Nether Toxin, even though it's not a passive anymore. Remember, Nether Toxin is now an activatable. Oh, okay, and it already has a it already has a subtle pass, a subtle silence, or a, a minor silence because they take damage over time. Like it's oh, there's a first hold that thought. First doom, hand of God comes out. So it actually sends her back. In comes the in comes the eclipse from Moshi. That's gonna cost Hisling his life. Stoic is gonna fall next though. So but the metamorphosis. Oh, in comes the metamorphosis terror blade who is just gonna go on a tear here. Moshi does get a double kill, but it's a two for two. And scenery gets the other two, so it's two for two, with both of both of the main carries getting the kills. That is going to be brutal coming up, because Luna, Luna's at level eleven, could pick up a second point. Actually, let's see, four, seven, ten, eleven. Okay. Mortification gets popped. Luna does not have a second point in Eclipse, she said, but she does have a big amount of trouble here. Scenery and Hizzling Finder. Scenery gets that kill, so that's his killing spree. Stoic is 
Stoic and Kali are both hazed up. Good, a good target for Haze would also be Tolera. Hisling is in the is in a really bad spot here. He launches the Infernal Blade on Jeff, but does pay for it with his life. Jeff initiates, but hits Tolera instead with that hook shot. Out comes the Winter's Curse. Tolera just starts pounding on Jeff, but not going to be enough to kill it. Stick is not going to survive this cold embrace. Is going to help, but we'll see if that actually sweet. Nope, no savior. So that ends up, once again, equal kills on both sides. One for two. Overgrowth comes out on the Masakari. Jeff and Kali are both here to help out as well. Talera and Jeff get stunned up by the Slytherin Crush, and that's going to let Masakari run away. Question is, Boy from North comes in. Viper Strike onto the onto the Queen of Pain, and she's going to she's going to manage to escape. Hisling, not gonna go after this. Not gonna finish chasing down Stoic. A double damage on the Viper. Oh, well, to be fair, Viper's main source of damage comes from poison attack with this that slow and damage over time, but Nether Toxin apparently, like I said, like I was saying, there it is actually. It disables passives, that's the... It lowers magic resistance and disables passives, that's insane. So I'm guessing Nether Toxin... I'm guessing this. it's it's like a Ricky's smokescreen. Callie getting this kill on stick there. Losing this win, losing the Winter Wyvern is not a huge deal, because Winter Wyvern is a support. The problem is it's going to the Queen of Pain, who did just pick up 10 strength, so she's going to be a little tougher to kill. But then again, that's pretty sure that's only like 10 HP. Boy from the north just getting attacked a little bit by a hill troll that was converted and is now dead. Oh wait, no, that was just a pull. I'm sorry. Does the area go up on another toxin? Nope, it's always 300. Top tier one is gonna be going down for the dire. They do they have no? Uh, meanwhile, the fortification gets popped by the radiant. Tier 1 does go down on the bottom lane, though, and Moshi actually got it. The two carries are actually competing pretty heavily here. Four man smoke, and they're just going to run straight north. They've even got a swiftness, the swiftness aura from, clock, from the drums of endurance on the clockwork. The net comes out on the clock. He hook shots in on a boy from the north, but the force staff is going to get him out of there. Jeff going to be on it. Gonna be on the chopping block. He goes down quickly, but Moshi managed to take down Hisling, so it's a one for one. Out comes the Winter's Curse. They get that's they get stoic with that. Well played by Stick. Talera, they know you're there. They know Talera's here somewhere. The rocks getting chucked out by the shard golems. Oh, but they find the Queen of Pain as well. Scenery's now on a mega kill streak. Dust comes out. Did it clip Talera? It did actually. He's gonna have to run. So that three for one goes horribly wrong for the dire. Switch over to net worth. The fortification comes out, but that's not going to really matter here. Scenery is just going to continue to chew it. And there it goes. Scenery is pulling way ahead. He's already up 500 on the Luna. Stick has to TP out, and he's going to make it. I kind of wish you could see team chat, but oh well. I guess they do that so that you can't, like, watch while your friend is playing and tell them what's going on. I mean, there's ways around that, of course, but there's ways around everything if you know what you're doing.
Ooh, good. Masakari has got the dust out. Got the stun on Talera. You can't be invisible here, mate. Overgrowth does clip all four of them, but that's not going to save him. Boy from the North picking that one up. Oh, they even get stoic with the haze, and they got him stunned up. Can they get him here? The tower is still active, but no, doesn't matter. Stoic is going down. Doom onto Jeff. He cannot do anything right now except run and take damage. Stun onto Moshi, but oh, Winter's Curse gets used on an illusion. That being said, Moshi still gets caught, and Scenery picking up another one. Scenery's up to. Up to seven kills and one death. This is starting to snowball for the Radiant here. Most of their kill, actually, seven of their seventeen kills have been put onto scenery. Shut in from Jeff, but boy from the north, just gonna be like, okay, whatever. Jeff is under some serious threat here. He's actually taking a lot of poison damage. Those ticks are gonna get rid of the living armor. They did manage to pick up a kill on five. Four of them got down his ling, so. Okay, so Stoic apparently released another courier? I don't know what's going on with that, but whatever. That's actually a lot. The new Nether Toxin is actually a lot like using Sandstorm to farm the jungle. Not a bad thing. As much as the Radiant are leading on kills and doing well in the team fights, the Dire have actually done quite a lot of damage to their towers. Both teams only have a single tier one left, but the Dire, they want to, they, Moshi wants this tier three. It does take a couple of shots from the tower after using that Lucent Beam, but, oh, the Slithering Crush misses, Talera's just going to punch the tower once. Splinter Blast does not even hit the tree at this time. Question is, who's gonna make the move first? There is a satyr just sitting here watching Santa Roshan. Rosanta. Roshanta? I don't know. Jeff is gonna. Oh, he gets doomed up, and Doom is just gonna walk alongside him, start chopping down him on this t on this clockwork. He's not gonna survive that. Even the hand of God. Well played by Doom, but oh, he gets caught, and he's the sole target. He was the sole target of that eclipse. Can they get... Oh, just shy. Moshe had gotten there a little bit faster. Still. This is a competitive match, and I'm loving it. Again, though, let me know what you guys think about me doing that different formula, where I do... Where I pick a hero in the game and follow them for the for the entire thing. I might just try that for next week anyway. The scenery does get the top does get the tower down. Question is, what else is gonna happen next? 
So the Dyer are now down to two outer towers. Good blink in from Masakari. Kali gets netted as well. They're just gonna keep her locked. They're just gonna keep the Queen of Pain locked down. Stoic is gonna fall first though to scenery. That means there's a lot less healing. Tolera falls as well, so there's not even the living armor. Jeff taking a ton of taking a pounding here, and they get him. Masakari jumps in for the double kill with that Slytherin crush. Kali is still alive. Moshi as well, but where is Moshi? Moshi's just pushing in top lane. I, to be fair, I'm not even sure the Luna would have helped very much in that fight. That was a very that was just a surgical execution. Bottom tier three under serious threat. The fortification does get popped, but the most of the radiant most of the radiant damage is just pounding away at this tower. It's going down. They're they're gonna they're gonna take at least a half lane of racks here. That being said, Stoic versus Hisling and Masakari. Hisling is gonna take him out. So again, there's no healing, although to be fair, the hand of God is off, and there's also no real tiny. There's a good crowd control with the overgrowth from Tolera, but is he gonna escape from this? Hisling might not. Kali, Hisling does fall, but like I said, Kali is under the is under doom. Sunder comes out. Moshi was the target. This means that scenery has a has a ton of some more than they thought he would, but the scream It took a ton of ton of it, but they took him out. The problem is they lost their racks. The entire bottom lane of racks is gone. The Dyer have, are gonna have to start moving out harder on this. They're gonna have to come up with something to do. And actually, I think that scream might have been wasted. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Guys, 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 you need to defend here. Radiance Middle Tower has fallen. Meanwhile, the tier 1 in the mid is finally gone for the Radiant. So there's only tier 2s on the, in the mid lane. Those are the only outer towers left on either side. The question is who's going to be the who's going to make the right move next? What is the right move? We don't know. We'll have to find out. Hisling falling to Moshi near the tier 2, but Yeah, Moshi's got a good call there with Retreat. Splinter Blast coming up. The, yeah, because the Radiant are coming. And Sunder, or Terrorblade, somebody's... Who's got the... Viper actually has the Radiance. So we've got nuclear poison here, effectively. Huh. Also, I think Roshan is immune to the Radiance. The Hand of God comes out. Kali coming in. Out comes the Eclipse. They're going to get a quick one on Boy from the North. The Hookshot misses from Jeff, so that's not great. The Dyer are going to just turn this around. They're going to steal Roshan. Moshi picks up the Aegis rapidly. Hisling taking a ton of, ton of damage here from Moshi. Moshi's going to get that one for a killing spree. They might pop the Aegis, though. Out comes the Overgrowth. On the back lines, scenery is only is really the only thing standing here. Masakari and Boy from the North, actually, yeah, scenery ends up being a two for one, but still the stolen Aegis and the stolen Roshan kill. Almost with that force staff, if he'd had the blink. If Blink had been off cooldown, Masakari could have gotten there. That being said, buildings are starting to take, starting to get taken down here. I'll say it like that.
Tier 3 on top lane has fallen for the Radiant, so shrines on both sides are vulnerable. That being said, nobody's really made a move to get them. Flare goes out. They do spot both scenery and Hisling. Kali being ballsy here, taking trying to take on the shrine on her own. Stoic comes in to join up, join in and help out, but Moshi as well. So the first shrine is going to fall. They're gonna be. They're making good position here on the mid tier two. But can the radiant hold the line? It all depends on who gets the better initiation. Oh, great stun there! Talera is gone, so there's the first blood of this fight. Kali is on the ne is next on the chopping block, and she's just taking a ton of punishment here. Out comes the eclipse. That's gonna take out boy. That's gonna keep boy from the north out of the fight for a while, especially with that cold embrace coming out. The net comes out, and there goes the Aegis. Boy from the North does fall to Moshi, but Stick taking down Jeff, that means that there's not going to be a lot of the mid-range disruption. The Doom comes out, and Moshi falls a second time. Jeff next. He's going to go as well. Masakari survives barely for 3 for 2. The Radiant with some good initiation skill. That being said, Hisling is way out of... Just way out of line, or way out of position. That, oh, in comes scenery, and all of a sudden Stoic is like, mm, I didn't want to do this, why am I here? So it ends up being a 4 for 3, because Hisling actually falling to Kali, who's going to be next on the block. The screen comes out, but doesn't save, actually no, it does save her. 4 for 3 at the end of the day. That fight spanned a lot of range, and ended up with a ton of blood. But ultimately, the Dyer win it, especially thanks to all. A lot of it comes down to thanks to Kali, that life that spell life steal with Sonic maxed out Sonic Wave, 470 damage. That might be what turns this in favor of the Dyer. She jumps. Kali jumps forward onto Stick. but not much else is going to happen there. Doom picking up some cash and a level off of that. We'll see where this goes. Although the fact that the Terror Blade now has an Eye of Scotty. Actually, he's had it for a while. Clockwork building himself up to a Scepter. So he's got quick shot. Quick hook shots. Scenery just sending in his shadows, his, his conjured images to deal with this shrine. Talera comes in, Leech seats up a an illusion, so.
Jeff fighting against the fake scenery. His hand of God has to come out. Tolera, though. They found the tree and got him down. So a lot of the defensive power for the radiant or for the dire is gone. Winter's Curse comes out, just slows down Jeff, but there's the doom and there's the burning clockwork. The gears aren't the gears are just ground down here at this point. Stoic falls next to scenery, so a mega kill streak for the Terror Blade, who's at 13 and 2. Each team has now lost one shrine. The main difference here, of course, is that the Radiant are going to be winning the bottom lane, because they've still got supers coming in. Scenery just Scenery and Borth in the North just walking in. Just chunking down a third. Now down to half HP on this tower. Moshi and Kali can do some things here, but can they do enough? His Hisling taking down Kali pretty heavily, but oh, the screen comes out. Not going to be enough to stop everybody. I don't think it even hit anybody, actually. Remember that the that the reflections are invincible. Two lanes of racks gone. The Radiant have pushed hard. They need to take out this mid-tier, too. Scenery calling for care. Not a bad idea. Roshan, maybe up, maybe up in 20 seconds. We'll see. Stick, gonna take a ton of damage, has to cold embrace. But not gonna be enough. Kali just comes in and screams it down. So now we know who wins between a, a giant, a solid block of ice and the Queen of Pain's voice. There's the respawn timer for Roshan. He's actually gonna respawn in a minute and a half, so. But the Dire may not give the Radiant that much time. Even through backdoor protection, they're gonna just start chopping away at this tower, and there goes the protection. Tier 2 is going down hard. They do lose their tomato, but I don't think Chen really cares. It's good to have a spirit vessel. They're just gonna rotate around. They're going straight onto the onto the top of lane of racks, and Luna. This is where Luna is a great siege weapon, because that because mo having moon glaives. Ooh, especially with ten to all day, ten to all stats. Out comes the eclipse. Just walks right up. Decides, you know what? I'm not gonna fight you. I'm gonna destroy your buildings. Remember, the melee rex does. I was gonna say, remember that melee racks do heal, but the supers are destroyed at tier four. Moshi actually goes all the way back. Stoic falls to stick. So they don't have the ability to instantly send any or to send anybody back really quickly now. And the supers are just marching in constantly from both the top and bottom lanes. Without stick, especially without that global heal presence. Question is, how long can the dire hold this? Because they gotta keep fighting, they gotta try to keep turning this around. They did good damage to the top lane of Rax, but tier three, the tier two is gone. The tier three is gonna be under threat pretty soon. Tier three, Metamorphosis and Clockwork is just instantly chunked down to half health. The power cogs aren't gonna do much here. The tower is. Taking a ton of damage. Viper. That's not Viper. Yeah, poison attacks affect the building, so there it goes. Boy from the North helping with that damage over time. And this is gonna be. This might be the Megas. There goes the melee racks. Scenery's not even paying attention to the kills. He's just got the. He just secured the Megas for the Radiant. Hissling is going down thanks to that. That armor, or the Shiva's guard, that's what it's called. Moshi just escaping, but the tier 4 is the only thing standing between the, the Dire and a loss here. The fight is still going. Jeff does not have Sunder for another 30 seconds. He's going to have to run. He's not going to make it, though. He, d he still gets a kill? He gets two kills before he dies. That's abs that's insane. That said, the supers have actually started pounding into the into the radiant or into the dire ancient. Sorry.
That ended up being a 4 for 3 with a buyback from the Chen. But the with the with the Megas just marching in constantly, the Dyer are gonna have to be careful. Twenty five percent life steal from Luna. Good choice. Let's see anybody else at twenty five? Doesn't look like it yet. No. Nope. This might come down to who plays the twenty fives better, or who goes off, who gets Roshan next because the big guys back up. Stick has found Kali, but jumps forward to try and help take down Moshi. Can they get the Luna here? If they do... Oh! Dangerous play! Kali taking a ton of damage from the Winter's Curse, but Moshi is the main target here. Scenery takes her down. And takes the, the quick Sunder. Kali's gonna be just beaten into the earth. Clockwork does manage to take down Masakari, well played by Jeff with that hook shot, but he's pro he might pay for this with his life. In fact, he's going to at this rate. Killing spree again for s for scenery, and the only ones with buyback are the tree and the Luna. And the radiant are like, okay, we got. I think we got this. And they're just gonna march straight up mid lane, and there's re only ones that can survive that can possibly fight this. Stoic is alive, but he doesn't have buyback. Whereas the tree, the tree has given up. Oh, there we go. The radiant win this one, folks. If you enjoyed, please feel free to like or favorite the video. You can also leave a comment down below if you have anything you'd like to say. If you want to keep up with me and never miss any of my current series, please feel free to click that subscribe button down below or the icon at the end of the video. And if you have a match, I'd, match you'd like me to check out, please send me the match ID number. You find it here at the bottom of the score screen. As for that, folks, I have been D. This is a back and forth one, but the Radiant pull out a victory here. For now, good night, and good gaming.